Hi, good morning everyone. Uh, welcome again to a new video about reinforced concrete design. This is Dr. Sharif al Gamal, and today we are going to continue our talking about design of reinforced concrete beams. As I explained in the first part, part number one will be followed by part number two and part number three. In this part, I'm going to show you a solid example of simply supported beam. Okay, let's see together here. It's example number one. One is spam beams. As we can see here, we have a plan of uh, four uh, slabs supported on beams. We have two different types of beams. Interior beams, we call it B1 here. They are all the same, and we have exterior beams, B2. So our concern in this example is to design these long beams, not the continuous beam here at the top or the continuous beam at the bottom. Let's see the example together. It says the four span slab uh, shown supports a life load of three kilonewton per meter square. So the life load is three kilonewton per meter square. Floor finishes and ceiling of one kilonewton per meter square. Uh, assume one hour fire resistance and mild exposure. This will help us to find the cover. FCU is 30 megapascal and F yield is 460 megapascal. FYV, the uh, yield strength of the shear reinforcement is 250. It means this is mild steel. And what is required? It is required to design a typical internal beam B1. It is required to design beam B1. Note the slab thickness is uh, 175 millimeters and columns are square columns of 300 by 300. So we need to design B1 here, any internal beam, B1, okay? Let's see how to start. Always we have to start by initial proportioning. We have to find the dimensions of the beams, okay? For initial proportioning, we table 3.9, okay? This is table 3.9, and this is simply supported, and of course it will be like a flanged beam because you have the slab and you have uh, a beam above the slab, so this will be the basic span to depth ratio, 16. Okay, so this will be the values that we take it from this table here. So basic span to depth ratio equals 16. Let's get the minimum depth equals the span. The span is 10 meters divided by 16. It will give us a value of 625 millimeter, which is the minimum value, the minimum D. Once you get the D, you have to get the cover. Cover, we have two tables. Table 3.3, three, this is for uh, durability. We have mild exposure, uh, exposure and C30. Let's go and see mild exposure with uh, C30, concrete of 30 megapascal. The cover is 25 millimeter from table 3.3. Three. Then we have to check also for fire, for fire resistance, for one hour fire resistance. Okay, table 3.4 one hour and this is beam simply supported so the cover here from this table is 20 millimeters so we have a value of 25 millimeter from the exposure and uh, 20 millimeter from fire resistance so we have to take the larger of the two values so it will be 25 millimeter the cover okay once you calculate the d and you calculate the cover now you are able to calculate the total h for the H, uh, we assume 25, 20 millimeter diameter for the bars, and we assume for the links 10 millimeter or 12 millimeters. It's up to you. You can do it as you want. It will not affect your design. And then we can calculate the total uh, H, the overall depth of this, uh, of this beam, equals D plus cover plus phi link plus phi over two of the longitudinal bars. So 625 plus 25 for the cover, plus uh, phi over 2, 10, and phi link is uh, 12 here. This is a small mistake. This is 12 millimeter. So this will give us a value of 672 millimeter. Let's round it to 675, okay? If you round it to 675, it is fine. Uh, but I prefer that we round it to the nearest 50 millimeter. So if I'm solving this one again, I will round it to 600 uh, or 700 millimeter. But this is also a game. As you know, in concrete design, you may have different solutions and all of them will be uh, correct and right. So in this example, we round it to uh, 675 millimeter. 
And now we have to get revised depths. The revised depths equals H minus cover minus phi length minus phi over two. This will give us a total thickness of, uh, or total depth of 628. The last thing to do for the initial proportion is to get the width, the B web equals, we said it is between H over two to H over three. So here it, uh, we took it, uh, it gives us 225 if we took H over three. So we round it to 250. So from the initial proportioning, we got the dimensions of the uh, beam is 250 millimeter B web, total H of 675. And as I told, if you took it 700, this is also correct. No problem at all, you are 100% right, okay? And we need the depth here is 628 because the depth will use it for uh, re reinforcement design and also for checking shear and other checks that we have, okay? Once you finish the initial proportioning, you have the dimension. Now we have to go to the second part about the final proportioning starting from calculating loads. Okay, final proportioning, loading. Loading include load from the slab, self-weight, and if you have wall loads. <clears throat> In this uh, example, we don't have a wall load, so we have two different types of loads. Load from the slab. You can see here from this drawing that this is the beam that we have. It carries this area of the slab. The slabs here is 10 meters by 4.5. So you can see that all of these slabs here, uh, these are all one-way slabs because the long side divided by the short side is greater than two. So to transfer the load from the slab to the beam in this case, we have to divide the slab from the short direction here. We make a line here at the middle and at the middle, and this will be the area carried by the slab. How much it will be this area? It is 10 meters by 4.5 meters, 2.25 from here, 2.25 from here. So the total equals the span. So the total area here equals 4.5 times 10 meters it gives us an area of 445 meter square. Okay, this will be the area. Once you know the area, we have to get the self weight of the slab. Self weight of the slab equals the thickness of the slab times the uh, density of the concrete. And if you want to get the load on the beam, you multiply by the area. So it will be the area times the self-weight of the slab. So 0 0.175 times 24 times 45, it will give us 189 kilonewton. Finishes again, one kilonewton times the area of the slab. So it will give us 45, okay. Then weight of the rib, okay, weight of the beam rib equals the area of the rib or the volume of this rib multiplied by the density of the concrete. So what is the rib here? You can see it is this area here, equals what? 250 times this height, which is the H minus HF. So it equals 0.25, let's put everything in meters, 0.25 times this height, which is H minus HF, 0.675 minus 0.175 times 10 meters, because you have the total length of the beam is 10 meters, times the density of the concrete, which is 24, so it gives us a total value of 30 kilonewton. So you have dead load from the slab, you have, or the self-weight of the slab, with the finishes, both of these values here, it will give you the total dead load from the slab. You have the self-weight of the beam itself, the rib, okay. If you uh, get the submission of the three values here, it will give you the total dead load, total dead load, G capital K, equals 264 kilonewton. Okay, in addition to the dead load, we need to find also the live load. The live load equals the live load, it was three kilonewton per meter square, multiplied by the area supported on the beam, which is 45 meter square. So it will give us a value of 135 kilonewton. So the total dead load is 264. Live load is 135. So to get the total load, you need to get the uh, submission, F capital equals what? 1.4 dead load plus 1.6 times live load. So multiply 1.4 by this value plus 1.6 multiplied by this value, it will give you the total load 585.6 kilonewton. So this is the total concentrated load on the beam, is the F capital of the beam, okay? If you want to get this load as a uniform load, just to divide this load kilonewton, divided by the span, which is 10 meters. So it will give you uh, 58.56 kilonewton per meter. 
So once you did that, you finish the second step about calculating the loads. What will be the next step? The next step is to make the structure analysis and to find the maximum bending moment and maximum shear force to be able to starting your design for reinforcement and checking for shear. So let's find the bending moment and the shear force. For the bending moment, this is a very famous case. You have a simply supported beam of 10 meters under your uniform load, which is 58.56 kN per meter. So the maximum bending moment is WL square over 8 or FL over 8. So it will give you a value of 700. 32 kilonewton meters, this is a positive moment, okay? This is a positive moment. In some textbooks, they draw the positive moment in the other side, but anyway, it is still a positive moment. The tension is down and the conversion is up. So if you put the enforcing, you put it at the bottom, at the tension side. So this is the maximum bending moment. How about the shear? Shear equals F over two or WL over two. So F over, WL over 2, it will give you a value of 292.8 kilonewton. And this is showing the shape of the shear force diagram. And as you see, the maximum shear is at the support decrease and another maximum at the second support. From these two values here, the maximum moment we are going to design for the reinforcement. And for the shear, we are going to design for the shear reinforcement. Let's start designing for the internal reinforcement. Okay. This section. Okay, because the flange is under tension, the flange is under compression, and the tension is down. So if the flange is under compression, so this will be a flange section. So we have to design it as a T-section. And as the T-section from this clause here, we have to find the B-flange. B-flange equals b web plus LZ over 5. And LZ here, because this is a simply supported beam, the LZ equals to L. So b web is 250 plus LZ is uh, 10 meters, put it in millimeters divided by five, so it will give you a B flange of two meters, 0.25. We have to put it in millimeters because we are using everything in Newton millimeters, so don't get confused and put it in meters because it will affect your solution. So this is the B flange. Once we have the B flange, we can start making our design, calculating the K equals M over FCU B flange D square. Okay, when we design for flange sections, we always assume now that the compression will be within the flange. Okay, because in 99.9 .9 cases, when you're designing a real beam with a real slab, and on all cases, the compression will be within the flange. So directly, you don't need to check that. You can calculate the K directly, assuming that the compression will be within the flange. So it is M ultimate divided by FCU B flange D square. M ultimate is the maximum positive moment here in this case. And again, don't forget to multiply by 10 to power 6, because this should be in Newton millimeter divided by FCU, 30 megapascal, B flange, 2250, and D square is 628 square, and gives us a small value here. This value, as you can see, it is less than the 0.156. It means this is a single reinforced section. It means that we don't need a compression reinforcement. We need only reinforcement in the tension side. Once you did that, you have to calculate the Z. Z over D from the code equals 0.5 square root of 0.25 minus K that you calculated here divided by 0.9. As you can see, it is a very high value here, 0.968. The code is saying this shouldn't be taken greater than 0.95. So we will take Z as 0.95 D. Once we did that, okay, this is the Z that we are going to use, the maximum Z allowed by the code. By the code. We have to calculate the area of the steel reinforcement required. It is M ultimate divided by 0.95 FP yield times Z. You did this, you do this here, so substitute the value and you get the required area of the steel reinforcement, 2,808 millimeter square. The last step is to choose the diameter and the spacing, suitable diameter and suitable, suitable spacing or suitable uh, number. So it will be six bars of 25 millimeter six. T25 and T refers to the high yield steel. Okay, bottom reinforcement and A is provided is 2950. You can do this from the table that I show you in my previous video, or you can do this manually. Okay, you know that if you are going to use an, a diameter of 25, you know the area of the bar is about 490 uh, or 491 millimeter square. So divide this one by the area of bar, you'll give you a number of bars and round it to uh, the greater uh, number. So it will be 6T25 
20, 25, and then we, this will be the AS provided. The AS provided should be, in all cases, greater than or equal to the AS required. So we found the bottom steel reinforcement. The last step, we need to find the hangers, the top steel. And we said this top steel will not be less than 20% of the AS provided. So the 20% of this value will give you a value of 590. Okay, we can take two T20 to reinforce it. It will be greater than this value. This will be fine. Okay, so once we did this, we know about the reinforcement here. We reach it to six bars at the bottom, 6025. You cannot put these six in one layer because the spacing will be less than the minimum spacing, which is the H aggregate plus five or 25 millimeter. So we have to put them into two layers, as you can see here, three bars here, three bars here. Okay, and if you will see on the uh, side view, you have six bars, we can make three extend from the beginning to the end. Another six bars would be shorter. As you can see, we put them in two layers. That's why you can see two lines here. For top reinforcement or hangers, we used T, uh, two T20, and these are the two T20. Okay, so we designed for the bottom reinforcement, for the hangers, what else we need to do now? We need to check, to make our checks, okay? Do we need to have side reinforcement here? We need only side reinforcement if the total height is greater than 750. In this case, we don't have, this height is less than 750, so don't, we don't need to have side bars on this beam, okay? Let's move. Now you have to make your checks. The checks started by, started by checking deflection, or you can check the shear first. Okay, here we check the deflection. So the deflection, you have table uh, 310. Okay, let's see here. This is table 310. Okay, in table 310, we have the modification factor. It can be calculated from this equation. And this equation depends on two values. Fs can be calculated from here. And m over bd squared, we have the value of bending moment and b and the d. You substitute the value into this equation here, you get the modification factor and you use it to check if the deflection is safe or unsafe. Let's do that. To get the value of M, we have to get the M over BF D squared. So this is a maximum moment, B flange, D squared. It will give us a value like that. FS, the stress in the steel reinforcement, two over three times F yield times AS provided, required divided by AS provided, will give us a value here. Substitute in these two values into the equation in table 310, we'll get the moment, the M here, the modification factor. This modification factor shouldn't be taken greater than two. Here it is less than two, it's okay. If it's greater than two, just take it as two. But it gives you an indication that your depth is too high. You can reduce the depth because it is like more than safe. Now, you calculated the value here. You need to check that the allowable span to depth ratio and actual span to depth ratio. Allowable span to depth ratio, uh, equals 16, which is the basic span to depth ratio, times the M that you calculated. So it gives us a value of 23.1. How about the actual span to depth ratio equals the actual span divided by the actual depth? It is 15.9. So here, 15.9 less than 23.1, it means okay. The actual span to depth ratio should be less than or equal to the allowable span to depth ratio. So it is fine, satisfied. So it means the deflection is safe. Once the deflection is safe, you have to go and check for the shear and design for shear reinforcement if it is minimum or, minimum or if it is required to greater than the minimum. So for checking the shear, we have first to check if the shear is exceeding the maximum shear uh, uh, or not. So we have to check this at the face of the support. So we have to calculate shear force at the face. Shear force at the face equals the reaction minus uniform load times half of the thickness of the column. So it is 292 minus 58.56. This is the uniform load times 0.15. Here, this 0.15, because we assume the column is 0.3 meter. So this is half of the width of the column. So it gives us a value of 284 kilonewton. This is still kilonewton. We need to, ch to change this one from kilonewton to kilonewton per millimeter square. We need, we need to get the shear stress. Okay, to get the shear stress, we get the V small, the V small equals V capital divided by B web times D. Here, this is very important. When you can divide by B, always in the shear, we use the B web. We don't use any more the B flange. Okay, 
So don't use the B flange when you check for the shear or you design for the shear. It is always the B web. So it equals the force divided by the dimensions. Dimensions are in millimeter. So the force also we need to put it as Newton. So multiplied by 10 to power 3. It gives us a value of 1.8 Newton per millimeter square. Of course, this value is less than the maximum shear or V ultimate, which is the lesser of 0.8 square root 30. Uh, or five, so it will be governed by 4.28. Of course, you can see here 1.8 is much less than uh, 4.2. It means the dimensions are okay. If the dimensions are okay, you can continue. You can proceed to check for your shear and you design the required lengths. Okay. At support, we can cut three bars. Okay, and we extend three bars. You know, we had six bars of T25. And the AS provided was 2,950. So if we cut three bars, it means as a support, we have only three bars, half of the reinforcement. This is why the area of the steel reinforcement, in this case, is 1,425. Okay. So to calculate 100 AS over BD, we will use the AS of 1,475 BD. It will give us a value like this. This value shouldn't be greater than three. If it is greater than three, we take it at three. Then from table three, nine here. Uh, okay, this is three ten. Let's go back, not this one. For the VC here, it is equal to 0.79 divided by gamma n times 100 AS divided by BD to power one over three times uh, 400 over D to power one over four times concrete strength divided by 25 to power one over three divided by gamma M, which is 125. So it will give us a value of 0.66. I think this part here is not correct. 100 AS over BD should be removed. It's by mistake in this equation. So this part here just need to be removed. I'm going to remove it like this, just not to be confused. Okay, here. This part here should be removed, okay? So the VC equal to this value. Now we need to check our uh, shear stress at a distance d from the face of the support okay vc plus 0.4 equals 1.06 newton per millimeter square since the v is greater than vc plus 0.4 shear reinforcement is needed because uh, in table 3.7 we have a condition if the v is less than vc plus 0.4 we need to use the minimum if the v is greater than vc plus 0.4 we have to use or to design for shear reinforcement. In this case, VC plus 0.4, okay, is less than the V. The V that we have it here, 1.8, and VC plus 0.4 is 1.06, so we need to design four links, okay. To design four links, we have to calculate the V at a distance D from the face of the support, because this is a critical section according to the British standard. So to get the shear force at a distance D from the support, equals the reaction, similar to what we did here and the first equation, the reaction, minus uniform load times, times the distance. Distance in this case equals 0.15, half of the width of the column, plus depth, the depth of the beam, which is 0.628, 628 millimeter, but we put it in meter, so it will give us a shear force of 248. Okay, let's get the shear stress. V small d divided by B times d, it will be 1.5. Eight, it is greater than VC plus 0.4. So we have to design. Let's assume that we will use two legs stirrups of diameter 10 millimeters. So the ASTV in this case, because we use two legs, it will be two times the area of one bar. It will be 157 millimeters square. Substitute this into equation 37. Okay, here this equation ASV should be greater than or equal to PV times SV times V minus VC divided by 0.95 FYV. Okay, we'll substitute into this equation. And from here, I will be able to get the SV. SV in this case is 162.1 millimeter, round to smaller value, because when you use this spacing, it means you are using more stirrups. So here in this case, we used R8 spaced at 150 millimeter. It is required 162, so you can use it 160, you can use it 150. I prefer to round it down to the nearest 25 millimeter. So R, it means we are using mild steel because 
the shear is uh, the yield strength of the steel is 250. It was given in the problem FYV. So this is why we used R10 spaced at 150. We have to check that this spacing is less than the maximum spacing required by the code. It's the maximum. It is 0.75D, 75% of the depth. 75% of the depth is 471. So it means the 150 is less than the SV max. It means it's okay. So our shear reinforcement at the area close to the support as the maximum shear uh, stresses areas is R10 is based at 150. Okay, now we need to, like an additional thing, you need to know where to use minimum legs. Okay, where do you, uh, do you want to use, if you want to use this R10 space at 150 for the whole beam, this is fine. But in this case, you are using more stirrups in an area, in the middle area of the beam where the shear stresses are very minor. So it is better to use more stirrups close to the support and to use minimum stirrups at uh, close to the middle of the beam. To do this, we need to, need to know about the capacity of nominal links. The capacity, capacity of nominal links equals the shear carried by the minimum stirrups, which is the VC plus 0.4, which is this value here. VC plus 0.4, it will give you the shear stress carried by the minimum links. Multiplied by B times D, it will give you the shear force carried by the minimum links. Multiply this, it will give you 166.4 kilonewton. So at any shear force less than 166.42, we can use minimum legs. Okay. Greater than this value 166, we have to design so it will we will use R10 space at 150. Okay. So how to find the distance to use the minimum links? This is very easy. It will be always the V phase minus Vn divided by W. Okay. It will be the shear stress, the shear force at the face minus shear force carried by the nominal links divided by the uniform load on the beam, okay, which is 58.56. It will be 2.25 meter from column phase. Okay. So for this 2.25, you know that the shear will be greater than this value. So at the first two meters or two meters and a quarter from the face of the support, we are going to use R10 spaced at 150. After that, in the middle part, we can use minimum links. Okay. How to find the number of links? This is will be easy. You know the distance here. Okay. Divide this distance by the spacing. You know how many links you need to use. Okay. The distance is. 2.25 meter, just put it in millimeter divided by the spacing and add one link because you have one at the beginning and what's that at the end. So, and then this will give you 16. It will be like 15 point something. Of course, we have to round it to uh, 16 near the support. So use 16 R10 spaced at 150 millimeter near to the support. After that, we'll use the minimum links. Let's remove this one here. Okay. Nominal lengths, we assume that we'll use 10 millimeters. So the ASCV, again, it is 157. For the nominal length, we use the same table and we use the equation for the nominal length to get the spacing. The spacing in this case is 373. We use as a maximum value 300 millimeter. And the distance covered by the nominal length will be equal to the total length minus 2 times 150, which is the column width divided by 2 from both sides, minus 2 times 2. 250, which is the area uh, covered by the design link. So it will be about five meters. So the middle five meters uh, of the beams will be reinforced with minimum links. To find the number of links, again, you will divide this distance by the spacing. It will give you the number of links, about 18 links, and it will be 18 R10 spaced at 300 millimeters. So from this design, we designed everything about the links. We designed for add the support, okay? It was R10 space that 150, and even we got the number of bars, okay? And then we got the minimum links, and the distance that will be covered by the minimum links, about five meters, about the middle half of the beam, and the number of the links, okay? 
Now we have two uh, additional checks, checks for cracking and checking for cracking. We have to check that we are satisfying the spacing and also we are satisfying the minimum reinforcement uh, ratio. From table 325, you can find the minimum reinforcement ratio here. B web divided by B, it is 0.11. So from table 3.25, you can find that the area will be 0.18%. Okay, this one, 0.18%. So you can calculate 0.18% times B web times H. Okay, so always here again, we use the B web divided by 100 because it's 0.18%, so it will give you a value of 303 millimeter square. And from this close here, the maximum is 4%, so it is 6,000. So your reinforcement should be something between these two values, greater than the minimum and less than the maximum, and this is our case. Our case here, we provided 6020, the area was 2,900. It is greater than the minimum and less than the maximum, which is okay. It means that area of the reinforcement is satisfying the requirements by the code. Then we have to check for the other check about the spacing of the bars. We have two checks here. The spacing of the bar should be greater than 25 millimeters and less than 155 millimeter according to table uh, 328 and this close here, okay, 155 for the maximum and for the minimum it is H aggregate plus 5, usually take it as 25 millimeters. So you have to check the spacing. To check the spacing, it will be the width of the beam minus 2 times this 25 millimeters, the cover, minus because you have a cover from both sides, minus 2 times the diameter of the stirrups or the length, minus 3 times the Diameter of the bar is because we have three bars divided by the number of the spacing, which is always less than the number of the bar by one. So if this is n of the bar per layer, so this would be n minus one. So it is 52 greater than 25 is okay. And of course, this is less than 155, it means okay. So we are satisfying now the minimum and maximum area. We are satisfying the spacing. It means the cracking are fine, okay? For the transverse steel on the flange, this is re regarding the, the slab reinforcement. We said it is above the flange should be uh, greater than 1.5 H265. This will be a reinforcement in the slab, okay? So the top transverse reinforcement on the slab, just keep in mind that couldn't be less than this values to satisfy the minimum by the code. This reinforcement is a reinforcement in the slab, not a reinforcement of the beam but it is coming from this provision. When we design a beam, the reinforcement in the slab above the beam should be greater than or equals to 0.15% uh, of the area of the concrete. Okay, now about the anchorage from table 327. Uh, the, if you have a lab length, if your reinforcement is not long enough and you have to make a lab, it will be like, if you check this table 325 about lab and splice length, it's 40 times bar diameter, about one meter. So this is anchorage length. Okay. Curtailment of the bars, we said, according to figure uh, 325, we can cut 50% of the bars and extend the other 50. So we cut three bars. And the distance from the center line of the support of the column, center line of the column, it is 0 0.08 of L. If you multiply it 0 0.08 times 10 meters, so it will be 800 millimeter from the center of the column. Last thing to do, the end anchorage, okay, we have this clause here, it tells us the end anchorage from the center line of the column should be greater than 12 times the bar diameter, so 12 times times 25, which is the bar diameter, 300 millimeter. In this case, you can find that half of the column will not be enough to have 300, because the column width, the total width of the column was 300, so half of the width is only 150, so in this case, we have, in case we have to use a hook, 90 degree hook to satisfy this end anchorage. Okay, to finalize your work, you have to make this on a drawing. The drawing will include a side view like this and some sections showing the reinforcement. So this is showing the side view of the beam, it's 10 meters, you have a column here, a column here, and this is the cross section showing the dimension 250, the total height 675, and this is the slab thickness. That's what the reinforcement. In the reinforcement, keep in mind that at the bottom we had six bars, T25, so, okay, we divided them into two layers, 
one layer it will be along and I extended here this is the end anchorage we bend it like this because this distance from the center line to the end was not satisfying the 12 times per diameter so we have to use a hook then for the curtailed bar the bars that we cut we cut them according to the code at a distance of 0 0.08 of the span which is 800 millimeter from the center line to cutting of the bar this is the bottom steel reinforcement how about the top steel reinforcement we use hangers of at least 20% of the bottom bars and where uh, they were they were uh, 2t 20 millimeters so we finish the bottom reinforcement the top reinforcement we have also to put the reinforcement for the uh, shear reinforcement for the first part here about two meter and quarter we used we designed for uh, shear reinforcement that was r8 spaced at 150 millimeter here and the other side also and the number we found that was 16 bars 16 lengths 16 are 10 spaced at 150 millimeter for this part and this part here for the middle part about 500.2 meters we used minimum lengths and it was r8 spaced at 300 so usually close to the support because you have higher shear stresses you use minimum spacing at the middle part because of the lower shear forces we use minimum spacing okay Max, maximum spacing here which is 300 millimeter and we use minimum links so r8 r10 is spaced at 150 close to the support r10 is spaced at 300 millimeter at the middle part last thing to do is to take sections so you take a section at close to the support you take a section at the middle part so section one one here at the middle part if you cut you will see at the bottom you have six bars okay three and three in two layers 60 10 t20 or this is 60 25 not 60 20 this by mistake this is 60 25 the number of bars here and at the top here we have 2 t20 then take section 2 section 2 here okay we cut in these two bars and also in, only in the three bars here at the bottom so we have three bars t25 and two bars t20 at the top links here at this section spaced at 150 because this is close to the support However, in section number one, links are spaced at 300 millimeter because this is at the middle part where we have minimum links. This is the end of our presentation. Thank you and see you in the coming video where we are going to talk about a design example of continuous beam uh, that will include design for shear, design for reinforcement. We'll have bottom reinforcement. We have to reinforcement, checking for shear, drawing of the reinforcement. So thank you for watching and see you in a coming video. Goodbye.